Hello everyone, welcome back to CodeH. In today's video, we will diving deep into building a powerful, fully automated infrastructure using Terraform. So get ready to learn how to set up an AWS application load balancer with an auto scaling group, ensuring your application can handle any traffic. So let's deep dive into the architecture. So in the AWS cloud, we will first create a VPC with public and private subnet spread across two availability zones for redundancy. Within the public subnet, we will deploy an internet gateway and NAT gateway in one of the public subnet. Internet gateway will allow internet traffic to the resources in the public subnet. This NAT gateway allow private subnet resources to access the internet securely. After that, we will create and deploy auto scaling group in a private subnet for security. Auto scaling group will launch EC2 instances in the EC2 instance, we will deploy Apache HTTP server. And in the Apache server, we will deploy a simple HTML test application, which will return a response to confirm everything is working. Once that is done, we will create application load balancer in the public subnet, making it accessible from the internet. And it will efficiently distribute incoming request to the EC2 instances within the auto scaling group. Now, if an EC2 instance need to install dependencies or grab updates, it will use NAT gateway for secure internet access like this. From the outside world, user will access your application through internet gateway. This gateway will then forward request to the application load balancer. Then it will smartly distribute the workload among the EC2 instances in your auto scaling group. Let's further deep dive into the setup. So what actually the setup will look like for application load balancer. So we will use a launch template to configure and launch EC2 instances within the auto scaling group. This template ensures consistency and simplifies the management. Next, we will create application load balancer with a dedicated security group that allowed internet traffic. We will then set up a listener for a load balancer, defining the rule that determines how it routes request to our EC2 instances. Finally, we will create a separate security group for our auto scaling group, which will be for underlying EC2 instances, which will only allow traffic that is originating from the application load balancer, keeping things secure. So for better understanding, I have created a step-by-step -step guide that you can follow along with as we code in the Terraform. But first thing first, you will need a VPC already set up in your AWS cloud. So don't worry, I have already created a video for how to create a VPC using Terraform in which I have explained each and every step in detail. So I recommend that you watch this video and I will attach its link in the video description as well. But in the hands-on, I will briefly explain VPC for better understanding. The following are the actual steps for this lecture. So first step is to create a security group. Step 2 will be creating an application load balancer and the last step will be creating an auto scaling group. In each step, we are going to create multiple resources. In step 1, we will create two security groups. First security group will allow traffic from the internet to application load balancer. Second security group will allow traffic from application load balancer to EC2. In step 2, we will create an application load balancer along with the target group and listener. And in the last step, we will create a launch template and auto scaling group. So by the end, you will have a robust and scalable infrastructure ready to handle traffic. Now let's jump into the hands-on. So in the IntelliJ, let me create a new folder for the current lecture. So that will be lecture 5. And let me copy paste the configuration for the VPC that we learned in the previous lecture. Okay, so let me quickly recap what we did in the previous lecture. So first step we did initialize the provider. So provider is AWS and region that I am going to use in this lecture is AP South 1. So you can use any region as per your requirement. Then second configuration we created for the VPC. So let me quickly explain this what we did. So first we created the VPC resource with this CIDR block and we enabled the DNS support and the DNS host names and this was the name for our VPC. After that we created two subnets 
and for this to submit we use this to availability zone that was ap south 1a ap south 1b then we have created the actual subnet and we deployed two subnet in each az right so this was the public subnet so this was the name for the public subnet then we assign the vpc id for this subnet that we will get from this resource right then we iterated on this a list to deploy this public subnet in each az okay so this is how we got the count of this list that is the length of this list then we created the cider subnet block here then we deployed this subnet in the to az right after that we created the private subnet this subnet as well we deployed into the to availability zone right then we created the internet gateway for which also we assigned the vpc id to attach it with the vpc and this was the name for the internet gateway then we created the route table for the public subnet so here we attach the vpc id then we defined the routes for the public subnet which will accept all the traffic from the internet and the destination will be internet gateway then we associated this route table with the public subnet so here we define the route table id that we just created here so we associated both the subnet for that purpose we use the length of the az that we defined earlier in the variable section right and then we assign the subnet id and this is how we associated this route table with the public subnet then we created the elastic ip after that we created the nat gateway here so here we define the subnet id then the allocation id this will come from the elastic ip resource then we define the dependency so we want to create a nat gateway only after creation of internet gateway this is how we can define the depends on attribute for your particular resource if that resource is dependent then we define the route table for the private subnet here so here as well we define the cider block and the destination so here destination will be nat gateway and here as well we define the depends on attribute as this is depend on the nat gateway okay then we created the association between the private subnet and the route table okay so this was a quick recap for the vpc now let's create a new file so i am giving file name as a ec2.tf so you can give any name as per your requirement so we are going to create first security group which will allow traffic from the internet to the application load balancer so let me quickly open the aws console and here let's go into the ec2 and if you go into the security group and here you can see what are the configuration required to create the security group so first it required the name description and particular vpc id in which we want to deploy the security group right then it requires inbound rule and outbound rule and in each rule it required type protocol port and the destination so let's give this configuration in the terraform so how to define security group so you can use the keyword resource like this and the type will be aws security group the name of the resource so i am giving name as a alb underscore sg now here first attribute will be name so name i am giving as a yt alb sg next attribute will be description so i am giving this as a description the next parameter will be vpc id in which we want to create this security group so this is auto populated because of the intellij but in case you want to know how this vpc id is coming from so if you go into the vpc configuration so this was our vpc resource so that will be aws underscore vpc so first parameter will be this then name of the vpc so here i am giving name as a custom underscore vpc so that will come here and what we want to get from the vpc we want to get the id so that's why dot id then next we want to define the ingress and 
egress rules. So this is how you can define the ingress rule. So from port, we want to accept traffic on port 80. Two port will be 80. Protocol type will be TCP. Insider block will be 0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0. So what is the meaning of this? So let me open the WS console. And here, if you click on the add rule, and here you can select all TCP and source will be from anywhere or you can define the particular uh, port as well. So let me select custom TCP. So here we defining 80 as a port. Okay. So the same rule we are configuring in the Terraform. Now let's define the egress rule as well. So this will be our egress rule. So it will allow all outgoing traffic from our security group. So this is how you can define the egress rule. Then last parameter will be name for our security group. So I'm giving this name in the tag section. Now we have created security group from internet to application load balancer. Now next security group we will create from application load balancer to EC2 instances. So next step will be security group for EC2 instance from ALB to EC2. So how to define the resource? Let's use the keyword resource. Then the resource type will be AWS security group. And here I am giving name as a EC2 underscore SG. And the configuration will be almost same. So let me copy paste this configuration. So here let me change the name. So it will be YT EC2 SG and this security group for our EC2 instance. So let me give name as a web server instance as we are going to deploy web application on our EC2 instance. Then VPC ID will be the same. Then let's change the ingress and egress rules. So what we want to define, we want to allow only traffic from the application load balancer. So let me make this port as a zero, two port as well zero. And here let me define it as a minus one. And here we want to accept traffic only from the application load balancer security group. So let's copy this name AWS security group. Let me remove this dot name of the resource that will be ALBSG, right? So this will be the name and dot ID. So what is the meaning of this rule? It will accept only traffic from this security group. Okay. Then egress rule will be the same. We want to allow all outgoing traffic from this security group. And let me change this tag so it will be YTEC2SG. Okay, so our first step is now completed. Now next step is to create the application load balancer. So let's write the next step that will be step 2 application load balancer. So let's see in the AWS console what are the parameters required for the application load balancer. So in the EC2 section only, if you go into the load balancing section here, click on the load balancers. Let's click on the create a load balancer. And here we are going to create application load balancer. So let's click on the create. So what are the parameters required? So name for the load balancer. Scheme will be internet facing or internal. Then it requires the network and the subnet mapping. Okay. And last, it required the security group. And these are the listener and routing configuration. Okay, so let's see how to define this configuration in the Terraform. So let's define the resource like this. And type will be AWS underscore LB. Okay, so it is not ALB, it will be LB. The name of the resource, so I am giving name as a app underscore LB, application load balancer. And in the resource block, let's define the parameter. So the first parameter will be name. So I'm giving name as a YT app LB. Then load balancer type. So type will be application. The next parameter will be, it will be internet facing or the private load balancer. So for that, you can use parameter internal and it will be false, right? Now next parameter will be security group. And here we will give the ID for the security group that we have created earlier. So let me go into the top section. 
So this is the security group that we have created for the application load balancer, right? So let's copy this resource type and name will be ALB underscore SG. Then use it here dot ALB SG dot ID, right? The next parameter will be subnet in which subnet we want to deploy this application load balancer. So let's go back into the VPC configuration and here find the configuration for the public subnet. So this was the configuration for our public subnet, right? So let's copy this resource type. Name will be public subnet. So let's use that in the subnet section. So this will be the name. And here we want to deploy this application load balancer in two public subnet. So let's use the square bracket like this and define the star here dot ID. So this is how this application load balancer will get deployed into two public subnet. Then next we want to create this application load balancer only after internet gateway is created. So how to define dependency? So you can use depends on parameter. And here we will require the ID for the internet gateway. So we have already defined the internet gateway in the VPC configuration, right? So just copy this name, AWS internet gateway, the name of the resource, okay? So this is how you can define the dependency on the internet gateway. Now let me go back into the AWS console. Now if you go here, it required to create the target group. Target type will be the instance. So it requires protocol and the port. Okay. Then IP address type, then VPC. Then the health check. So let's define these parameters in the Terraform. So here we are creating resource target group for ALB. So let's define the resource. Resource type will be AWS underscore lb underscore target group so here i am giving name as a alb underscore ect underscore eg so first parameter will be name name here i am giving as a yt web server tg so you can give any name as per your requirement port will be 80 the next parameter will be protocol so protocol will be http then let's define the VPC ID. For that, you can use AWS underscore VPC. Then the name of the VPC and dot ID like this. Then last will be name for the target group. So here I'm giving name as a YT ALB EC2 target group like this. So you can give any name as per your requirement. Now next step is to create the listener for the application load balancer. So if you go into the load balancer configuration, here we require to define the listener, right? So let's define this listener in the data form. So define the resource like this. Resource type will be AWS underscore LB underscore listener. The name of the listener. So I'm giving as a ALB listener. So here you need to define the load balancer ARN. So how to get that ARN? So let's use this resource name from the application load balancer section so that will be aws lb dot application load balancer name dot arm like this let me correct this spelling now let's define the port for the listener so we want to get traffic on port 80 the next will be protocol protocol will be HTTP. Now let's define the default action. So type will be here forward and the next parameter will be target group ARN. So what is our target group? So our target group is this target, right? We want to forward our traffic to this target from our application load balancer, right? So let's use this name dot target group name dot ARN. Simple. Now let's define the tax attribute here as well. And here, let me give this name. Okay, so we define the security group. Now we define the application load balancer. Now last step is to create the launch template and launch the auto scaling group, right? So let's write the last step. That will be step three, launch template for EC2. 
So let's go back into the AWS console and let's see what are the parameter requires for the launch template. So here you will find the section for the auto scaling group. Click on that. Click on the create auto scaling group. Here you will find the option for the creating auto scaling group. So it required the name and it required the launch template. Let's click on the launch template. So what are the parameters required for the launch template? So name for the launch template, then the image ID, instance type, key pair, then the network setting, okay? And if you go into the advanced details, there is user data script section. So here you can define the user data script and we are going to use this user data script to deploy our Apache server on the EC2 instance. Now let's go into the image section here. So we are going to use Amazon Linux for our demo. So image ID will be this one. And instance type we are going to use T2 micro. Okay. So these two information required in the Terraform configuration. So let's go back into the Terraform configuration. And let's define our first resource that will be launch template. So resource type will be AWS launch template and let me give name for the template so first parameter will be name for the template the next section is to define the image id and the instance type so let's copy the image id from the aws console so this is our image id let's define the instance type so type will be T2 dot micro. Now next we require to define the network configuration, right? So let's define the attribute network interface like this. Then parameter will be to associate it with the public IP addresses. So we want to launch our EC2 instances in the private subnet, right? So let's enter false here. Then security group. So we have already created a security group for our EC2 instance as well, right? So this was the security group that we have created. So let's copy this resource type and this will be the name for the resource. And let's use it here. Dot ID like this. Now next section is to define the user data script. So let's create a user data script. So you can define that script here as well or you can create a script in the new file as well. So let's create a new file here. So file name I am giving as a user data dot sh and this is the configuration for the Apache HTTP server. So what I am doing here, so first step is to update, then installing the HTTP server, then I am starting and enabling the Apache server, then I am deploying one sample HTML into this location, okay. So file name will be index.html and content will be like this. So it will return this message from YT web server and with the particular IP address of that EC2 instance. Now let's use this file name in the launch template configuration. So here you can define function that will be file base 64 like this and here name of the file. So file name is user data dot sh. Now let's define the tags for our launch template. So here resource type will be instance and the let's define the tags. So name will be like this. Okay, so launch template is ready. Now let's create the actual auto scaling group in which we will use this launch template. So let's define the resource name will be AWS underscore auto scaling group like this the name of the resource so that will be ec2 underscore esg then maximum size i want to define as three and minimum size i want two okay and what is the desired capacity i want so that will be two so what i'm defining here in the auto scaling maximum number of ec2 instance i want to launch that will be three minimum ec2 instance will be two and desired capacity I want as two. 
So this configuration I am defining for the demonstration purpose. So you can define your configuration as per your requirement. Then let's define the name for the auto scaling group. So here I'm giving name as a YT Web Server ASG. Okay, so you can define any name as per your requirement. Then let's define the target group ARN. So target group ARN will be, let's copy this resource type. So this is the target group and this is the name of the resource. So let's use it here. So this is the name of the target group dot ARN like this. The next we need to define the VPC zone identifier. So here we want to deploy this auto scaling group in the private subnet. So let's use the subnet AWS underscore subnet like this dot private subnet. So this is the name of the resource that we use in the VPC this one okay then in the square bracket star dot id like this then we need to define the launch template configuration so here we need to define the id so how to get the id let's use this resource type that is aws launch template and this will be the name for the resource so dot name of the resource dot id now let's define the version. So here I'm defining version as a latest like this. And last parameter will be health check type. So here I'm using as a EC2. Okay, so the auto scaling group configuration is ready. Now one more configuration I want to show. So let's define that configuration. So here I'm using keyword as a output and output name I'm giving as a ALB underscore dns underscore name okay so this is a new concept in our series so what this will do this will output the value of particular resource in the console so what i want to output i want to output the dns name from our application load balancer which we will use to call our apache server so how to define that so you can define keyword output like this the name of the resource then value will be resource type will be aws lb dot name of the resource so our resource name is app underscore lb dot what we want to export we want to export dns name so this dns name it will show in the console okay so let's apply this configuration so let me open the terminal so let me cd into the lecture 5 folder so first step will be to format our configuration so let's use the command terraform fmt so it will just format our configuration then let's use the next command to initialize our provider so command will be terraform init okay so our provider is initialized so let's validate our configuration for that purpose you can use the command terraform validate okay so our configuration is valid so let's use the next command to apply our configuration so that will be terraform apply Okay, so it is showing some error that is incorrect attribute value type at line 60 on subnets parameter section. So let's go into the configuration and let's check here it is showing some error. So let me remove this square bracket here and let's apply this configuration again. Okay, so it is showing it is going to add 21 resources and this will be our output variable let's enter yes so it is going to take some time to launch the configuration so let me pause the video for some time okay so our configuration is ready so it is not showing any output so let's run the command terraform output okay so this is our dns name so let's copy this dns name and let's run this url in the browser Okay, so we are getting message from our EC2 instance. So let's refresh it again. So we are getting response from both the EC2 instance. Okay, so let's verify our configuration in the AWS console. So first let's go into the VPC. 
so this is the vpc that we have created then let's click on the subnets so these are the subnets that we have created so this is our internet gateway then this is our net gateway and these are the route tables associated with the public and the private subnet now let's go into the ec2 configuration and here if you go into the auto scaling group so this is the auto scaling group it has two instances and if you click on it so here you will find all the details so this is our desired capacity maximum and min capacity then if you click on the target groups so this is the target group that we have created and these are the ec2 instances associated with the target group then if you go into the security groups so these are the two security group that we have created so this is the security group which is allowing all the traffic from the internet and this is the security group for the ec2 instance which will allow traffic only from the application load balancer so this is the alb that we have created and this is the dns name that we get from the output variable and if you go into the instances section here so these are the two ec2 instances that is launched under the auto scaling group okay so this is how our configuration is ready now once you're done with the practice let's run the command terraform destroy so it will delete all the resources from the aws okay so this is how we have successfully deployed the application load balancer with auto scaling group in the aws console thanks for watching the video